In this episode, we check out what makes the Land Cruiser so special. From high-tech party tricks to laying tracks on a mountain trail. It's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe out there during lockdown. For the Land Cruiser, the original plan was to do a collab with another YouTuber. But due to the virus, that didn't quite work out. We'll try something again later with a different vehicle. Instead, I went out without a crew to see just what made the Land Cruiser so special. As always, we're powered by your likes and subs, so please hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Now to get started, let's take a look at the vehicle that Toyota sent us for testing. This is a 2020 Land Cruiser. It's available only in two trims, Standard or Heritage. This is the Standard model. Prices you see it here, $89,129, including options and destination. All new in 2008, the Series 200 has had a few nips and tucks over the years to keep it relevant. In 2013, it received a number of luxury upgrades as standard equipment. That's also when the multi-terrain select system was added. This is an off-road system that uses brake vectoring tech to give an even more off-road capability. If you watched our review of the TRD Pro Toyota Tacoma or 4Runner, it's a similar setup. We'll dive into the system a little bit later in the video. In 2016, the Series 200 Land Cruiser did receive a facelift, along with some mechanical changes. The 5.7 liter V8 engine, however, was carried over. To this day, it still puts out 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. The transmission was upgraded to an 8-speed automatic and it received a lower axle ratio to help with economy. Still, you're looking at an EPA rating of only 13 miles to the gallon in town and 17 on the highway. So it's not exactly the first choice for economical motoring. The back opens with a distinctive clamshell design. With all the rows folded, you get up to 82.8 .8 cubic feet of cargo space. There is a third row, but at best, it's an afterthought and should only be used for emergencies. Or if you hate somebody, you can put them back there too. The second row fits an adult with plenty of room. Passengers also get lots of controls, including seat heaters, aircon, and entertainment. Our rig was fitted with the optional $2,220 entertainment option. If you're a big fan of high-end in-car entertainment from 2006, by all means, spend the money. For everybody else, that's a hard pass. Up front, the mid-aughts inspired interior continues. Nice leather and wood trim on the wheel are reminiscent of classic Lexus. The same could be said for the rest of the front cabin. Everything is high quality and nice on the hands. It's just not very contemporary, but that's okay. Where we're going, the supple leather isn't the highest priority. Though there are 10-way adjustments for the driver with memory, uh, so at least we'll be comfortable. And man, is that leather nice. The steering wheel is even heated, plus the seats have heating and cooling. One nice nod to the modern era is the inclusion of Toyota's Safety Sense P system that has pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alerts, blind spot monitors, and auto high beams. It also gets headlight washers and a surround view camera system. Another Lexus part shows up in the armrest, which features the cool box. It's like a cooler, but where you would normally store your Kanye CDs. Plug in a mobile device to see just how far Toyota has come with the Land Cruiser's infotainment system since 2013. Yeah, it's exactly the same system from seven years ago. That means you get iTunes over USB and frustratingly awful built-in maps. That's about it. But let's not focus on that. This is a legendary off-road warrior, and we have to respect that the head unit isn't the reason people buy a Land Cruiser. 90 grand is spent for people that want something a bit more capable off-road than your average SUV. Power goes to all four wheels thanks to a full-time four-wheel drive system. That means you get two powertrain ranges, four high and four low. It also includes a locking torsion center differential with the ability to push up to 60% of available torque to the rear wheels. Let's line up and see what that looks like on our gravel slip test. With that center diff locked, 
the rear tires simply tear into the road, just as they should. Compare this to the 2020 Highlander, and you can see these are two very different drivetrains. This Land Cruiser also features kinetic dynamic suspension, which was originally developed for the Lexus variant of the same vehicle, the GX470. Under normal driving conditions, it is disabled. However, the moment a wheel drops lower on one side, which happens quite a lot when off-roading, a hydraulic cylinder detects the change and disconnects the sway bar to increase articulation. This allows the Land Cruiser to perform dual driving roles, on-road and off-road, without compromise. Let's try a quick zero to 60. Now, uh, there's no special modes here. It basically is one mode in regards to uh, pavement driving. Complete stop. Three, two, one, go. Whoa, that V8 kicks in. 40, 50, and 60. You know, it's kind of what you expect out of a 400 foot pound torque V8. Now, this V8 is interesting because it's also the same one that you get in the Sequoia. However, in this vehicle, it's connected to an eight-speed automatic transmission, and it does power all four wheels using uh, Toyota's four-wheel drive system. Now, this, unlike a truck, is four-wheel drive all the time. However, you still have a four low for when you get into the more rugged stuff, and that is what the Land Cruiser is all about. It's all about rugged stuff. If you just want to drive around town with the occasional off-road excursion, you should really seriously consider the Sequoia. It's more built for that kind of use. This one, they've even retained the rear solid axle because it's better off-road. And it has a higher towing capacity of more than 8,000 pounds, which is roughly 1,000 pounds more than what the Sequoia can tow when comparably equipped. So really what this is, this is an off-road master and it has been for 70 years. Land Cruiser is synonymous with Range Rover and all the, you know, and Jeep and all the serious off-roaders. It has carved itself out as being a master of the off-road. When going through the features, I did point out that this had radar cruise control with lane detection. However, it's not as good as one would hope in 2020. This uses the older system that simply tells you when you cross a line. No auto steering. Let's give it a little try here. Basically, I'm in adaptive cruise control, turn on the radar, take my hands off, and yeah, I just went over a lane. That's it. It's, it's very old school in its approach to technology. Uh, it does have collision mitigation, it has blind spot monitoring, and has a really cool surround view camera system that is hampered slightly by this low res display, but the core functionality is there. For off-road use, the Land Cruiser has a comprehensive toolbox. That includes crawl control, multi-terrain assist, and something you won't find in either a 4Runner or a Tacoma, and that is called turn assist. First, I'm gonna show you what a turn would look like without that system engaged. I'm gonna crank it all the way, I'm gonna drive, and we'll see how tight we can make this corner. And you can see we can't make it. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, and I'm not changing the wheel at all. I'm just gonna roll back into the position we were in. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to engage turn control. To do that, I have to turn on four low, which means I gotta go into neutral. Okay, we're now in that. I'm gonna turn on crawl control, which I have to put it in drive, crawl control, and then I'm gonna hit one more button for turn control. Engage that. Again, crank the wheel all the way over, and we're gonna let this do its magic. And by magic, I mean it's gonna break the inside rear wheel to drag the vehicle around the corner. And we you look at that? Eh, eh? That's pretty cool. And then just disengage and away we go. You can see just how much of a difference turn assist makes. 
First, I whip around without the system. Next, I use the system and you can see not quite one car width tighter of a turning radius. This could be quite useful in tricky canyons or forest road situations when you need just a little tighter turning control. The spring snowfall we're getting is quite a surprise. Usually it's not this late in the season. I wasn't planning on dealing with it, but hey, that's mountain life. Let's see how it affects the climbing ability of this Land Cruiser. Keeping in mind, these are standard tires. They're Dunlop Grand Trex, and they're pretty awful. Because of COVID-19, we're very limited in the places I can go. Uh, most of the trails are closed. However, our rock climb is still available. And I know the rock climb is gonna be like no challenge for this vehicle, but I'm gonna go ahead and go up it so you can see just how much of a non-challenge it is. I wanna take the hard line. There is a little bit of snow and these are not snow tires. So let's see how it does. Uh, let's see, do we wanna do mud sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt or rock? Don't want mud and sand because that's gonna give me wheel spin. So I'm gonna to go to rock because that's gonna give me the least amount of wheel spin. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my center differential. Away we go. The suspension in this is really designed for these kind of roads. I mean, it, it makes this super smooth. It gives me all the articulation that I need. Power is already to all four wheels. Um, so, I mean, it really should be a breeze. In fact, I'm gonna go and put my wheel up on this rock, which you normally wouldn't want to do in snowy conditions. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna turn on the front camera here so I can really see what's going on. Check that out. And I'm stopping just so you can see how power is being distributed. So easy. Now we should be able to really see how good the articulation is on this as I put one wheel into a ditch and that rear wheel should lift a little. But power still goes to all four wheels really easy. So easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the most challenging line. And by that, I'm actually going to drive over some boulders. And we'll see how this system works. Yeah, now we're getting shifted. Yeah. Dude, so easy. Is that kind of a feature worth it to you? Well, then you might consider a 90 grand Land Cruiser. Of course, the same MTS feature is also available on the 4Runner as well as the TRD Pro Tacoma. So, you know, you might consider something like this. In fact, you can get a 4Runner Off-Road Edition has the same feature, it just doesn't have the turn control. Uh, so that would also be a much more budget-friendly um, option. In fact, it's half the price of this one. So now let's look at going down the hill. I love this gauge cluster. It tells me everything that I need here. I put it on auto so it comes on automatically. I can see my tire tracks. Now, for hill descent control, it doesn't have that feature per se. Instead, you use crawl control, which is the next setting here, and then I can adjust my speed. I'm gonna put it all the way down to uh, one. And we'll just let this ease me down the hill. I'm going so slow, I'm not even registering. Now, yeah, it does sound horrible, <laughs> but that is the system working, doing what it's supposed to do. This same system can get you out of even uh, buried sand. So if your vehicle is like up to the waist in sand, uh, this system can dig you out. It's pretty incredible.
In fact, I tried that feature out on my review of the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro from last year. If you're done watching this video, go check that one out. It really shows off some more features of this uh, off-road system. But keep in mind, it doesn't have turn control. That is exclusive to the Land Cruiser. Okay, this is actually going a little too slow. How often do I say that? So I'm gonna go ahead and just move the knob and let this roll a little bit quicker. Eight point nine inches of ground clearance. All the features you would want, not bad. I mean, we really got nothing else to prove here. So I'm gonna say that if you want the most extreme off-roader and you want comfort for up to five adults and two tiny kids, the Land Cruiser is really a great option. The only downside is, yeah, it's 90 grand as you see it here. That is a lot of money by anybody's measure. Is it worth it to you? Well, that's what you're gonna to have to decide yourself. I'm Ryan Douthit, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, also tell us, what do you think? What would you get if money wasn't an issue? Would you get this Land Cruiser or maybe a Mercedes-Benz G550? Perhaps a Forerunner? Post a comment below. Also, please remember to like and subscribe. We need your input to help grow our channel. And we're looking to get up to 250,000 subs in 2020. At least I really hope so. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.